I was never the one to write up a song for just anyone. I I was always the one to find myself lost in all conversations. Oh, 'cause I've always been told that things will unfold if you keep on waiting. But then you came along and proved me wrong. The sofa is so comfortable. So far, living in my new apartment has been so lovely. Like, I literally can't get enough of the light and the additional space and the random wildlife settings that I've had. Like, it is just so special. Hello, little ones. This time there are five. And it's interesting because I still have barely anything in terms of furniture and decor up in here. And when I was planning to move here, I was really worried about not having everything set up and even the idea of having my mattress on the floor was really anxiety provoking to me. But somehow as time's gone on, I'm really unbothered by it. You just kind of settle back into a new normal and you kind of make do with what you have. I mean, I will change the whole bed on the floor situation. I have a DIY in mind for that too. Um, but that will just take a little bit of time because I have some other things that I want to do first. And I've kind of just decided that I'll take things at my own pace because that is when I am the most creative. And I think that's why I like decorating my whole space. I've said in other videos, like it takes me so much time just because I'm constantly trying to think of different things that just don't exist. Um, so that takes time for me. I don't know, I can't do it any faster. So in terms of DIY projects, I think I just wanna do whatever I feel like, whatever's gonna make me happy. Or sometimes there are things that are missing but that are really bothering me and I'll wanna tackle that first. So speaking of that, one thing that actually is bothering me is my lack of bedside table. So this is the current situation um, and like it's okay for right now just to have things on the ground. But what I kind of notice is like day by day, it just gets more and more messy. And then every time I want to vacuum, I have to move everything up. And then like I have some dust that lands on the bed. It's just a little bit annoying. So I figure I would tackle that today and some other things that I have on my mind in terms of projects. So I ordered these two tables off of Amazon and they were really affordable in the exact style that I wanted. Just they didn't have the embellishments or the actual color that I wanted. So I thought this would be the perfect DIY. Whoops. <laughs> I think they were only $100 for two of them. So for being the style that I wanted, I felt like that was a steal. And then just with some minor upgrades, they could be perfect for what I want. So let's see what they look like in real life though. What is this? <laughs> I had never seen little things like this, but these actually like lock the screws in place. I don't know, I'm clearly not a furniture maker, but very cool. Okay, so they're actually like a really nice design. They have handles that are here, but I didn't install them because of the thing I'm gonna do next. Um, but yeah, I really like the design. It's just the color just doesn't look very good, but that's okay. I really didn't care what it looked like in terms of the finish, because I wanna refinish it. So my plan is to upgrade this whole piece and change the whole look. The first thing I'm gonna do is a little cutout on the drawer front. And to do that, I'm gonna take my ruler and I'm going to mark off two centimeters all the way around. Then I'm going to do a pilot hole, in theory, with a drill that I haven't touched in forever because it was my dad's old drill. Actually, I've never used that drill, so we'll see how it works. So I wanted to show you that when you're doing the pilot holes, you should do the pilot hole on the good side of the drawer face going through to the back, okay? Because when you do it that way, um, this is the front of the drawer face and this is what it looks like. So super clean hole, but this is what the back looks like. 
So if you were to do it from the back, it would look horrible on the front and like have all this rip up, which is bad. However, it is the opposite for when you're doing the jigsaw. So do your pilot hole from the good side to the back, then flip it over so the back side is where you're going with the jigsaw because I did a little quick test cut and this is what it would look like on the top, like going from this side down, just this cut right here, do you see that? It's like very, very rough. But on the other side, it is super smooth, like this cut right here. So just wanted to share that with you. I didn't know that, so yeah. So I'm all done cutting this out and it went okay, I'd say. Now I wasn't sure if the edges, just because of the like wood chip product this is made out of, is like a little bit jagged. I wasn't sure what it was gonna be like. It cut pretty straight, but it definitely has like little indents and stuff. So I'm thinking I'm gonna wood fill it and that should fix it, I hope. So to do the actual color, I wanna do this black and I got this little sample from Home Depot and it is Merc sample in semi-gloss and it's just in the color black. So it's the deep base one saying it's supposed to be interior and exterior. I mean, let's see how it goes. I'm gonna use a little paint roller to put it on. It's black if I ever did see it. I'm not gonna use the most skill, I do have this thing, I'm not gonna pour it in here. I'm just gonna do it like, just the way that I feel like doing it, okay? just like so high coverage and it pretty much is looking perfect after the second coat okay so we're just gonna wait for that to dry and it's perfect timing because something very exciting is happening let me show you it's here I'm so excited to finally have a couch our sofa is here it's arrived I am so excited. Oh, and a little update on the crooked blinds. We broke them, so now there is no blind in that window. So this sofa is by Article and they gifted it to me and I could not be more thankful because I am obsessed with it. It is so stunning, it's so beautiful. Article sells really high quality products that are built to last, they're stunning in design, but they're also at a reasonable price. Ready, 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 one, two, three. Ooh. Come to the cushion. 
It does. An article just makes it so easy to have a space that feels beautiful. Honestly, this couch is just, I can already tell it's a statement and it's going to transform the whole living room just with that single item. In terms of buying items from Article, you can shop online and their shipping has contactless delivery, which is just amazing. Plus their in-stock items deliver really, really fast. Article ships almost anywhere in the US and Canada for a flat fee of $49 or with free shipping on orders over $999. This sofa here is the Abisco Quartz sofa and I love it so much. It is the sofa of my dreams, but I digress. Anyway, so back to my DIY. I think the paint should now be dry, so back at it. Let me go grab my woven raffia. So when I came from Toronto, all I could bring was what would fit in an SUV. And one of the things that I was really happy that I could fit was my small collection of woven raffia and cane webbing. I'm thinking for this one, I'm going to use this chunkier woven raffia, more like a square weave, which I think will go really nice with the angled lines of the table itself. Now as a precautionary measure, I'm just adding a little layer of Mod Podge on the outside areas of the raffia and that is just to make sure that it won't unweave itself as I cut it closer to the exact measurements. Okay, so while I'm waiting for that to dry, I want to talk you through the next part because <laughs> it's a loose idea right now. So I want to be able to add like a doorknob to the center of the drawer front and um, obviously to be able to do that, I'm gonna need the drawer front to be hard and to have a backing as opposed to just the raffia cloth. Um, previously when I've done cutouts, I've just left it as raffia cloth. This time I have to fill it back in. So I was thinking of using a piece of plywood, but I want something that's gonna be easy to cut and relatively small. So when I was at the dollar store, I picked up this. This is basically like plywood essentially, but thin plywood. It has a little edge on it on the back. So I'm gonna have to pry this off. And then I was thinking I would cut this to size and use this for the backing and maybe staple that on. I don't know, let's give it a go. Good morning. So it is now actually day three of working on the set of bedside tables. Now, let me tell you, I thought it was only gonna take me a day to do, incorrect. <laughs> but that's okay, because I swear we're almost done. It's gonna be done today. Now, I went to Home Depot and I picked up two different knobs that I thought might look good. This is one of them, and this is the other one. But here's the thing, I swear they're too big. Do you see this? I feel like that would be so big and clunky. Like that's the one that's black and this is the one that's brass. And I just don't like the look of either of them. So I was thinking in my supply of DIYs that I brought from Toronto, I have this big dowel. Why I brought my supply of dowels, like we'll never know, but I did. And I was thinking maybe I could cut a little piece off of this with the jigsaw because I don't have my miter saw here. And I could like attach that on 
as like a little center one, either like this way or this way, I don't know. I'm gonna give it a go though, cause I think that could look really nice and neutral and minimal and just like be the perfect little statement while still acting as a knob. I'm filling in any of those little rough edges using some wood fill and then I'm going to sand that all smooth as well. I'm now just marking off the center of the dowel and I'm going to drill a hole using a drill bit that is going to be the size of an 832 screw because those are the screws that I got for the other knobs. After that, I'm just grabbing some painter's tape, putting that on the front and marking off where the center point is of the entire face of the drawer. And then I am also adding some painter's tape on the back and this is just to ensure a smooth cut. Now I'm just taking an 832 screw that is half an inch and I'm screwing it into the hole of the dowel knob until it's super secure. Here's a little look for ya. I did a little staging magic, but look at this. It's so nice, I love it. And not that hard to DIY. And low key, I just put some stuff out for staging. This is obviously not how it's gonna stay. This is fabric I bought to reupholster a chair. This is an outdoor cushion. <laughs> this is the print from Fly. But yeah, just to give you a little vibe. Check, here you go. I am truthfully so pleased with how these bedside tables turned out. They are exactly the style that I wanna go for in here. It is a bit of a shift from my previous style and you'll see it all come together as I DIY more things because right now it's a bit of a mishmash, but I'm just loving it so much. So thank you so much for joining me on this journey. So far, I'm loving Homemade Happy. It is a joy to make these episodes. I have so many things planned, including making a dining table, reupholstering chairs, redoing floors, statement walls, all that type of stuff. I'm just currently just brainstorming things and getting supplies and stuff like that. So I hope that you'll keep joining me along for the journey. Thank you so much for watching this episode, for subscribing. And if you liked it, please like this, like hit the thumb, hit, hit the button down below. Obviously I do have an Instagram. So if you're interested, I'm at DIY Dahlia with an underscore at the end. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next week. Bye.